figured it's just like end of the season. So you kind of just, it's casual Friday day at work. Like uh, <laughs> we haven't seen the lineup yet. Is there a, what should we expect? Any fun changes again? Uh, no, no changes. Um, you, you know, you'll see um, uh, Yadi is going to DH. You know, he's going to be in there. He had a good, he had a good at bat yesterday. Kind of nice to see um, a typical uh, you know, face and righty. So a lot of lefties are in there today. Does Juan stay in right? Juan stays in right. Okay, so that's the new normal. Um, how, about the two, how about the two plays those guys made in right and left? Pretty awesome. They were good. Uh, we just spoke to Daniel Hudson a few minutes ago. When you look back um, on his season, what are your impressions? I mean, the, the, if, if you look back, I know he's disappointed because of the results, but I thought he threw the ball really well. I, I really did. Um, and, and that's encouraging. You know, here's a guy that, you know, had some injuries early in his career and you know, last year we got him, he was dealing with a, a knee injury and he, he pitched. Here's a guy for me that wants the ball every day. And um, that's, to me, that's all, that's a lot that you could say for a guy that, you know, had come off all these injuries. He takes the ball. He told me last night, Hey, he's ready to pitch. You know, whenever I need him, he's ready to pitch. And um, that means a lot. It means a lot to a ball club that we know what to expect. And he goes out there and gives it, gives it all every day. Todd Davis, NBC Sports Washington. Hey, Davey. Um, in 1987, you played with Andre Dawson on the Cubs. Uh, he won MVP that year. You, you guys as a whole weren't very good. So he's on this list of players who have won MVP on a sub-500 team or a, not a very good team. Um, do you generally think that that's okay that a team record uh, is not an influencer when determining who the most valuable player of a league is? I, I truly believe it, it speaks for itself. A most valuable player is the player achievement, um, regardless of what team he plays on. And that year, Andre was unbelievable. I, I think he hit, ended up with 49 home runs, mm -hmm. uh, but he was really good. I mean, if a player is having an unbelievable year and uh, – and just because his team is not, you know, in the running for anything, I still think he should be considered. Absolutely. Okay. That's it. Oh, well, Tony Gwynn should have won, but. Um, <laughs> it. it's, it's pretty hard to beat, though, what he did. You got to remember that, hey, that year, you, that year he, he actually, he signed a blank contract that year. You guys remember that? I got a, I got a funny story about that one, too. I don't, you probably heard it. So he's my so he we just signed him and you know knowing Andre he's a very quiet guy and uh, so we get this guy and he's he's kind of intimidating and they put his locker next to mine so I, I decided that I was going to leave him alone and not talk to him uh, just let him do his thing so I show would show up very early to the ballpark put all my clothes on and just get out of his way so when he comes in you know plus the media was they always you know wanted to talk to him. So he, some of the players caught on and um, started telling Andre that I didn't like him <laughs> as a joke. So one day I come in, and I, you know, like I said, I'm there early. I come in, he's already there. So now I'm freaking out a little bit saying, okay, what do I do now? You know, so I'm kind of waiting around, you know, waiting for him. And he's just sitting there and kind of like, so finally I said, I got get, to go get dressed because I'm, I'm going to end up being late and that's not good. Um, so I go over there and he gets off, off his chair and looks at me and goes, you got a problem with me? He's got this big, deep voice. And right when he said that, I was like, no, I don't have a problem with you, Hawk. <laughs> he goes, then why don't you ever come in here when I'm in here? I said, hey, I, 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 I started stuttering. I, I, I'm just going to, I just want to give you your space. And he goes, if we're going to be teammates, you need to talk to me. Bro. He started, so now I'm like, oh no, what did I do, you know? And then I turn around and all these guys are laughing. And I go, ah, oh, funny, very funny, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but he was probably one of my all time favorite teammates I've ever played with. Um, he was special, uh, you know, the things he did on the field, off the field. Uh, he mentored me when I was playing, you know, as you know, he played center field as well before we moved to right field. So he mentored me a lot, you know, I was playing center field and it was awesome to be his teammate. It's a little Andre Dawson story. Alex Chapel, Mass and TV. <laughs> oh, Davey, that's cool. Thank you for sharing that. It wasn't cool at the time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> true. true. 
Um, from talking with Patrick Corbin last night and then uh, just now with Daniel Hudson and Max Scherzer has talked about it a couple times, the importance of just being healthy this season. And these were some of your biggest arms in 2019. Now to have this period in the off season, a longer extended time for them to just fully feel right, feel good, feel healthy. How, how valuable is that for them that they've uh, been able to be healthy and they're going into the off season feeling really good? Right, that's uh, like I said before, that's you. You know, get these guys out here and get them on a normal um, after the season program, you know, where they can kind of relax knowing that they don't have to rehab on anything. And then once they start, you know, start their uh, their off season program, you know, they're, they're fully ready, 100% ready to go. Um, that's great, you know, those, having these guys uh, be able to finish up strong, but yet, you know, finish up healthy and have a normal, uh, normal winter. And then um, do you think, after this experience, we've heard so many times with spring training, it's too long. Where, what do you think the mindset will be now with approaching spring training after this 2020 season? Yeah, I hope they understand that, you know, um, there's a reason why this, they have spring training. There's a reason why spring training is six weeks long. Um, and you, you can see why. So, you know, moving forward to next year, we're going to utilize every day of spring training and get guys ready to go. Uh, uh, and I think they, they know the importance of that right now. The other thing is, too, about this 60-game season, when you think back, you know, for me, it's and, – and I say this all, all the time – the importance of, of getting off to a good start. Um, really, really, if you think about it, you know, this year, uh, moving forward, you want it – you know, those, those uh, March 28, 29 games, whatever, uh, April, early April games, those games are just as important as the games in, in late September. So I want these guys to understand after what we went through this year because it was a short season that just think about the, six, the first 60 games of next year and where we want to be. We, we, we definitely want to get off to a really good start next year uh, moving forward. Everybody's healthy and, and uh, we come out of the gates ready to go and fired up. Mark Zuckerman, MassInSports.com. Hey, all I know is growing up, I watched a lot of you guys on WGN and Andre Dawson was always like the scariest hitter to me. Like he's, he was at the plate. I was terrified of him. Hey, I was, hey, I kept telling myself too, when I was playing next to him, I said, whatever you do, do not run into that man. Just, just stay away from that guy in right field. When, and I was a center fielder. So he would always say, hey, you have precedence. When you, when you think you can catch it, you call, you, you call the ball. And I'd run over there and the minute I heard, go to it. I was out the way. <laughs> um, all right. So question for you is uh, your bullpen the first like month of the season was really good, probably the strength of the team. And then it sort of faded over the second half. How much do you attribute that to the rotation, the struggles you had there, the injuries you had there, the fact that guys weren't pitching deeper in games? Do you think there was a domino effect on the bullpen? And is that in any way, do you look at what the final numbers are for your bullpen in that context of, of what the starters did in front of them. So oh, absolutely, we, you know, and I, it's funny. I had a conversation with Riz about all that, how well these guys did in the beginning. Um, we just, you know, the, the start we couldn't get guys to go deep in games, so we had to use these guys an awful lot. A lot of guys, we, you know, four outs, five outs earlier, um, and you know, they got taxed. I mean, they really did. So, like I said before, you know, I'm super proud of of what these guys in our bullpen did, you know, even though lately, you know, the numbers haven't been there, but they've thrown the ball well, all, you know, all those guys. You know, I watch uh, young Finnegan, the way he threw the ball, Suero, who, you know, really got big ass for us through the ball really well when he came back. And when he finally came back, because, you know, we had to get him back where he was not really ready, you know, and we had to bring him back slow. But once he got going, as you see, he threw, he threw the ball really well. Huddy, uh, getting Harris back, who we didn't have, you know, fully, uh, ready and now you see what he can do when he's healthy. So, uh, and Rainey, you know, Rainey started off like gangbusters, and you know, because of the use, um, you know, we, just, we decided, you know, that it's best that we just shut him down and get him ready for for uh, next spring training. So, I'm really pleased with all these guys. I mean, uh, every one of them, and, and and looking forward to having these guys back next year, fresh, and uh, and get going again. How many reliable relievers do you think it takes as a manager? to make sure you're not overworking any one of them the way that at times you, you sort of had to do? Like, on, honest answer. <laughs> no, so, some days, you know, so, some days or some weeks, it's not, you probably need 20. <laughs> but no, honestly, you need, you, you need, 
Oh gosh, I don't, to be like fully like throughout like like rotating guys in and out, keeping guys healthy, or yeah. just on the roster. No, 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 no. Like on at a, on any given night, how many guys would you want to, in theory, have available so that you don't have to use the guys that have yeah, I, the I would, last four. Yeah, on, honestly, if you know, you think about it, if you had if you had probably ten relievers where you could rotate back and forth, I think that would be the number. I mean, I see a lot of guys, you know, a lot of like I I watched the Braves and I watched some of these other teams that had you know, 13, 14 guys, but then again, you know, you, you, they didn't use half the guys, you know, a lot of guys sat down and then they sent them out. And but I think, you know, a good number um, is, is probably about 10. If, you know, if you had two good long men in there, uh, a couple of lefties, you know, and the rest, of your, your, you know, your guys that you can go to, I'd say 10 would be the number. So you're, for, like number. So huh? you're for expanding rosters, evidently. <laughs> yeah, 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 I kind of liked it. Um, but then again, like I said, as you as you saw, you know, but I think going forward next year, I think our, you know, our starting pitching will definitely be on track to do what they normally do. Um, you know, we, we count on those guys going six plus innings, um, you know, getting us in the seventh inning and then, you know, we can do a lot of different things then. So, you know, this year was just a, one of those years, like I said, you know, after talking to Max, after talking to Corbin, um, they really felt stronger the last two or three outings than they did, you know, in the beginning. Um, and it's just just building them up, you know, chance to get getting them built up. Howard Fenders, Associated Press. Hey, Dave. Uh, apologies for not knowing the answer to this, but I've been away for a little bit. Uh, I noticed that little bit of bling on your finger there. Do you wear that ring every day, or how often do you? No, do I, I I actually um so. The coaching staff and myself decided decided to wear it for the last week of the season, so um, we've been wearing it this, this whole week. Yeah, it's kind of kind of cool. I, I won't wear it, you know. Come Sunday, it goes off and goes back in this little shiny box. Um, but it's it's kind of nice to look down and look at it. And does it stick in your craw still a little? The fact that you guys never got to sort of do the thing every other World Series. Or some of the things World Series champs always get to do the next year, the banner raising and the normal ring ceremony and, and some of that stuff. Oh, absolutely. It's, it, it's tough, you know, it's, and it's not just, you know, I speak for the players when I say this, I mean, you know, I, you know they could, they could say whatever they want, but, you know, I feel like they got cheated, you know, from what they really deserve and the fans, you know, I always say the fans, you know, the fans really, you know, they're the ones that really got cheated, you know, and, and hopefully moving forward um, when we do have fans. And, you know, I always say this to the learning family that we do something special uh, for them, whether we bring all the guys back and the guys that are here or whatever, you know, soon um, to kind of celebrate and give, give the fans a celebration that they deserve. Thanks. Uh, we'll go to David Aldridge, uh, The Athletic. Hey, Davey, um, along those lines of what, what Howard just was asking you, going forward with the group that you anticipate will be there next year from among the group that was there last year, uh, what do you think their, their DNA is like to the point where you think that they can still contend and still win a division or playoffs and, and have another shot at this? Yeah, I think, I think our core guys, um, that we know right now are coming back, uh, you could build off of that. You know, obviously we have some some young, talented players that that, will, that are going to help us, you know, next year and help us in the in, in the near future. Um, with, with, with addition, you know, we, we've seen some guys that we brought in that we we really like that also could help us next year. You know, and I don't know what their situation is, but because they're free agents, but um, you know, we have a couple few guys that we, we really really like. We like what they do, so. Uh, with that being said, you know, I know um, come Monday, Tuesday, you know, Riz and I will start, start having conversations of how this thing is going to play out this winter and who we feel like could help us, you know, that's out there. And, and Riz will go, get to work and, and do his due diligence on players and see if we could form a, a, a really strong roster to compete again next year. Uh, but the guys that, that are here that I, I know that are coming back, um, Look, we got, you know, I, I say this all the time. I think we got one of the best starting pitchers in the game still. And uh, with those guys going out there, 
uh, it gives us a chance to win every game. So I'm excited about that. And, and given the circumstances of this year, would you, do you anticipate, or do you think maybe I fight for a guy that may be on the margin, but he was here last year. He was part of why we won. And I might fight for him a little harder than I would normally. Yeah. I, I, I always fight with Rizzo for the guys that I want. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But that's what, that's the beauty about him and I, I mean, we have, we have some unbelievable conversations together. So um, we're going to, we're, we're going to do everything we can to get this right. You know, we always, we always do. And, um, and he does a great job on bringing players that he thinks will fit, knowing, knowing my style of managing, knowing our style of playing, the kind of players we like. Um, we try to find those players that we know are going to fit, not only on the field, but also in the clubhouse. All right, and two more quick ones. Jessica Camarado, MB.com. Davey, Howie wasn't able to play as much this season as you all would have liked, but what did he still bring to the team just by simply being around you guys? You know, his leadership. I mean, I, I can't I can't speak enough about his leadership. Um, he's he's unbelievable in that clubhouse. I, I've always said this when when he speaks, everybody listens. Uh, he's got that voice. So uh, I don't know what his situation is, what he's thinking. I know he, I talked a little bit, and um, if he can get healthy, you know, he he thinks he's got one more year in him. So uh, hopefully, you know, we'll be keeping in touch with him, and hopefully, he, he can get healthy again, and, and we'll we'll go from there. And we'll finish up. Uh, Todd Davis, NBC Sports, Washington. Hey, David. Just to follow up on Strasburg, the last we knew, you guys were sending a trainer over to him, and he was doing some things at his house. What 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 is his status at this point, either with his wrist or hand, more specifically than just trying to stay in shape generally? Yeah, he's. I mean, he he's just progressing. You know, really, really, really good. So um, I don't think there's going to be any any uh, any doubt that he starts spring training ready to go. I mean, uh, but he's doing well.